overpowered are the words you could use to describe most of the brave Arsenal weapons coming with Into the Light. However, by the looks of it, not all of them seem to be worth your time, and in today's video, we're going to be exploring exactly which weapons and which corresponding god rolls that you need to be looking out for. Just recently, it was confirmed by Bungie on the Massive Breakdown podcast that in the final shape, they are releasing tech allowing you to double enhance weapons with multiple traits per column, which is huge news for the exclusive drops because they all drop with double perks. There is a catch though, unlike raid adept weapons, you won't be able to change the barrel, magazine and masterwork when enhancing them, only the main column 3 and 4 perks. Furthermore, despite the title and thumbnail, all of the brave arsenal weapons are incredibly solid, it's just that some shine more than others, which is why if you stick around to the end of the video, I've created a priority farming order for each and every one, so if you just want to see that, skip to the timestamp on screen. Do bear in mind that this is strictly from a PvE perspective since this is a PvE YouTube channel, so even if I write off some of the weapons for PvE, they might still be very potent in PvP. However, this isn't my focus or specialty. With each weapon, I'm going to be comparing it to its current counterpart where applicable or similar archetypes to properly get an idea of what you're in for. No fluff, no BS, just straight facts. So, without further ado, let's start with Forbearance. The new perk pool is much the same as its raid version, but with the addition of Demolitionist. This change now makes it the uncontested best waveframe in the game, bar none. Especially on top of the new origin trait also granting grenade energy, and I'm certain that it will still be relevant in final shape. Speaking of, in the same podcast mentioned previously, they actually revealed the nerf happening to Chain Reaction, which as it currently stands will reduce the detonation radius by 15% and the damage by 20%, which from the sound of it makes me think Forbearance will be just fine. In terms of what to chase, you're going to want the choice between Demo and Ambitious Assassin in Column 3 and Chain Reaction plus Any in Column 4. The only downside to this new version is that it doesn't get the Soul Drinker origin trait, but in most at light content, this isn't a big issue. The only place where I'd rather use Raid Forbearance is something like a GM, for example. Pretty crazy how the weapon to power creep Forbearance is Forbearance. Up next is Succession, and with it we arrive at one of the weapons you can get away with skipping, at least at the beginning of your loot grind. On this new version, the perks are mostly identical to its previous iteration, but there is some variance with the likes of Discord and Redirection, but you'd be driving a hard bargain to argue using a sniper rifle for ad clear. As is true before, you can't go wrong with Recon Vorpal, but again, I'd skip this one for now. Falling Guillotine on the surface looks very promising due to it featuring double damage perks, namely Frenzy and Surrounded. But the thing with this is that you won't have access to Relentless Strikes, meaning your DPS will be good, yes, but your total damage will fall off a cliff because you'll be running out of ammo so fast. But this isn't to say I'm ruling it out. In fact, it's quite the contrary. After having reviewed the Slammer, we knew that Vortex frames were never going to be S tier for damage, though where the Slammer shines in the movement department, so too will Falling Guillotine. I have an entire video on this, but to quickly summarize, Vortex frames are excellent for skating movement because the Vortex heavy attack has greater lunge with eager edge than its adaptive frame counterparts, and when Guillotine releases, the same will be true. Fortunately, Guillotine rolls eager edge in column 4, meaning once enhanced, it will match the Slammer's movement capabilities. Overall, I still think the Slammer will see more use due to the insane utility provided by Cold Steel, but regardless, I still think it's worth chasing an eager edge roll if you don't do GMs a lot, and also get a frenzy surrounded one. Who knows, maybe in final shape, they'll finally reduce the cost of the heavy attack back to 4. The Recluse is up next and is an absolute franchise staple. But you must understand, dear viewer, nostalgia is a powerful emotion. And while when in its time, the Recluse was arguably the strongest weapon in the entire game, nowadays, times have changed. Back then, there was no subclass 3.0, no intricate mod system, and generally, the game was more focused on gunplay rather than ability uptime like it is now. That isn't to say you should completely skip this weapon. In fact, it will become the best Void SMG out there. But that's really all it is. A Void SMG. Not the meta-defining beast it once was. Anyway, enough philosophical ranting, let's get technical. From the podcast, it was revealed that Master of Arms is now a 15% damage buff that, like before, procs from any weapon kill, which is pretty solid. But Frenzy also buffs your damage by 15% on top of giving you plus 100 handling and reload speed. This isn't to say you shouldn't get one with Master of Arms though, because the beauty of having double perks allows you to, well, have both. So the role I would be chasing is Enlightened Action with the choice of Repulsor Brace in column 3 and Master of Arms Frenzy in column 4. If the final shape artifact contains volatile rounds, then this weapon is going to be quite good, especially with the choice of Repulsor Brace. Quickly before the video continues, if you like what you see here, consider subscribing as we're trying to reach 30,000 subs before the release of the final shape and we need your help to get there. Now back to the video. Continuing the trend of franchise icons, the mountaintop is up next and boy oh boy do we have a juicer. Besides Slick Draw, there is literally not a single bad perk on this weapon and what's more is they made Micro Missile the intrinsic 
intrinsic frame property of the weapon, meaning it now gets access to damage perks as well. Mossy Max on Twitter pointed out that it appears it's receiving an overall damage buff of 30% as well as all other special breach GLs, which is absolutely huge. What remains to be seen is if it's going to be any good at ad clear, which back in the day was one of its main strengths, and whether they have reverted the in-air accuracy penalties. At this stage, it's honestly not fair to recommend a single god roll because it could be used for so many different things, we just need to be able to play with it to get a better idea. That said, autoloading Vorpal looks pretty nice for any damage rotations, and Ambitious Assassin 1 for All sounds fantastic for ad clear. Up next is Hammerhead, and well, yup, it's official. This is now the best machine gun in the game, without question. The combos of Rampage Onslaught or Rampage Killing Tally amount to an unbelievable force of destruction when it comes to ad clear, especially if paired with a Geo Falcon Hunter build for constant volatile explosions. And the best part is, you don't even need to worry about reloading because Marksman Dodge does this for you. For any non-hunters, Rewind Rounds Onslaught is probably more suitable since it prolongs reloading quite effectively, but yeah, bye-bye commemoration. Blast Furnace is an absolute Black Armoury classic, though unfortunately Pulse Rifles are not exactly the most popular primary weapons in the current PvE sandbox, though it does sport some nice combos like Kinetic Tremors Frenzy or Kinetic Tremors Firefly. Though by the looks of it, this seems more like a PvP option, so I wouldn't have this one as your main priority. Next we have the Edge Transit Adaptive Heavy Grenade Launcher and oh boy, yeah, uh, hmm. This weapon is literally about to take over the game. You've probably seen it already, but this weapon gets Cascade Point Bait and Switch with Selectable Envious Assassin, which instantly makes it one of the single highest DPS heavy weapons in the entire game. Gone are the days of endlessly grinding cataphract rolls for the perfect combo, since now Edge Transit completely and utterly eclipses it. This weapon honestly deserves an entire video of its own, and you bet I will be making one as soon as I get my hands on the god roll. No other perks besides Envious Assassin, Cascade Point, and Bait and Switch matter. This weapon was made to take over the meta and so it shall. Luna's Howl I feel is definitely geared towards the PvP side of things since this was its original specialty, though it does get heal clip incandescent which is pretty nice, though I'm not sure it's going to be quite as good as explosive payload incandescent Zowley's Bane, but we'll honestly have to wait and see. Again, more of a PvP pick, not high priority for PvE. Midnight Coup returns to us after almost four years of being locked in the DCV and the main comparison to make here is Fatebringer since they're both kinetic 140 RPM hand cannons with strong PvP. PvE perks. One of the strongest combos on Fatebringer was Explosive Payload Frenzy and Midnight Coup also happens to feature this role. However, Fatebringer is an older weapon without access to newer perks, which is where Midnight Coup now outclasses it. You can now get Firefly Frenzy, Firefly Kinetic Tremors, and of course the classic Outlaw Rampage. Personally, I would shoot for the choice between Firefly and Explosive Payload in the third column and Kinetic Tremors Frenzy in the fourth column. Hung Jury is a bit of a weird pick to reprise given it has three separate versions already, but okay. Okay Bungie, you do you. This time round it gets the utility combo of shoot to loot explosive payload which for me personally is the only role I'll be chasing. Its previous iterations fill the same scout rifle niche and there's nothing really groundbreaking about this newer version anyway. Finally we come to Elsie's rifle, the reprisal of the stranger's rifle from Destiny 1. Much like Blast Furnace, it's literally a pulse rifle in PvE. That said, it is void, meaning it will have some nice synergy with Jafalcon Hunters and it does get Repulsor Brace to complement this. Though again, in my humble opinion this weapon is something more more catered towards the PvP crowd. Alright then, taking everything into consideration, I've made this priority tier list which I've also linked in the description for those who want a clearer idea of what to chase first, again from a PvE perspective. Rest assured, I'll be making several videos on each of these weapons in due time, so stay tuned for those. Anyway, that's all for today, I hope you enjoyed and are as excited as I am to get my hands on these weapons, and I'll see you in the next one. If you made it this far, thank you so much, your support means the world. And if you're really into the content I create, consider becoming a member of the channel which not only only lets you support me in the best way possible, it also nets you a whole host of awesome perks along with it. A massive shout out to these members up on screen and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now dear viewer.